Today I want to talk about how loud a show should be mixed, like a live show, a live band, let's say. Um, there's different types of show, but how, how loud is the loudest show? Some small jazz bands are going to be quieter, some metal bands are going to be louder. This is dependent on many factors, including whether it's an indoor show or outdoor show. Um, how far away you are from the stage, but let's, let's say indoor show, like in a club or house of worship or medium-sized auditorium <clears throat> and not large auditorium or outside yet. So we'll start with the small areas or the small venues, first of all. Um, out of all the shows I've measured with my SPL meter, I'd say the most comfortable shows I've measured are between 95 and 103 decibels A-weighted and anywhere from 102 you know, to 110 C-weighted. Anything more than that is very uncomfortable. If people are uncomfortable and they're, they're, they're itching their ears, scratching their ears because they're tickling, that's a warning sign of hearing loss. So we'll talk about hearing loss too. But first of all, I measured shows with A weighting and C weighting because I want to know, know the noise factor and I want to know the bass response factor too. So even though I mix between, let's say, 95 and 110 dB, uh, and I watch the levels, I measure them with my meter too. I, I don't listen for the whole show. If I'm mixing like three or four bands, I don't, I don't listen without earplugs for three or four bands. So what I have is a set of drummer's earplugs called Vater's, V-A-T-E-R. They look like this and they're soft silicone. They fit in the ear nicely. And I, I monitor without earplugs every once in a while I pull them out. Then I put them in. And I get a sense of the mix and I get used to the mix with the earplugs in. So most of the mixing for loud bands is done with earplugs in. So how do I know how loud something is? Well, I'm going to use my SPL meter. <clears throat> I use this SPL meter, which is a um, IEC 651 Type 2 calibrated. So for high accuracy. And I use that for A-weighted and C-weighted average measurements. So not, um, I, I do peak measurements sometimes just to see how loud the loudest peak is, but I'm more concerned with the average over time of how loud something is. So A-weighted and C-weighted. A-weighted is mostly noise and C-weighted includes the bass. So it's the noise factor I'm concerned about um, because of potential hearing loss. So what I do is I don't point this at the band. I'll turn it on. It's got a little light on here too, which is very cool. I'll turn it on slow response. It's fast and slow. I'll make sure it's in the right range. So if there's an indicator that I'm not in the right range, I have to make sure I'm in the right range. Otherwise, it's not going to be accurate. The battery has to be uh, fresh or, or good. Otherwise, it might not be accurate. And then I just do measurements and I see how loud the average signal is and make sure that I'm in this. I wouldn't say the safety zone because I don't know what exactly the safety zone is. There are only guidelines for safety zones. So Occupational Health and Safety has established a set of, um, of, of guidelines, including 85 decibels of noise exposure for eight hours. Increase that to 90 decibels for four hours, 95 decibels for two hours, and 100 decibels for one hour, which I don't go by that scale. I go by another one which is in several countries around the world, and that includes 85 dB for eight hours, or sorry, yeah, 85 dB noise exposure for eight hours, 88 dB for four hours, 91 dB for two hours, and when you get up to 100 decibels, it's 15 minutes. I just, I take the safety part of that because, I take the safety side of that because I don't want to, uh, uh, risk getting hearing loss as a live sound person. So for many, many of the shows I did, and some of them I do now, I just I make sure that I'm not going to go deaf because I need my ears as part of my profession. So yes, most of my mixes for loud bands are with earplugs. For conferences and quieter stuff, I don't wear earplugs for that. But I do measure to make sure I know how loud it is. Um, one thing I want to avoid is tinnitus. I already have tinnitus, a little bit, the high pitch in my right ear. It doesn't really bother me. I don't notice it until everything's really, really quiet. So not a huge deal, but I don't want any more tinnitus. 
Uh, I'm not an ear doctor, so I don't know exactly what would happen if I continue to expose to loud sounds other than too much pressure on my uh, hair cells and my ears and then going deaf, but I don't want to take the chance. So I just use earplugs almost all the time. Even in movie theaters, I'll put earplugs in. The other things that can happen if you are exposed or you expose an audience to loud noises would be a, a temporary threshold shift in which sensitivity of the hearing goes down, but tempor temporarily, meaning you have to turn things up in order to hear it the same. And a permanent threshold shift, which means you're way less sensitive to sounds, maybe certain frequency bands, and then you've, you're going to run into eventual hearing problems because of that if you continue to expose yourself to loud sounds. So bottom line is, um, is, is keep your mixes with like vocals and noisy stuff like guitars and stuff like that between 95 and 105 max. You can do that, right? It is possible. And the bass response, you know, it's gonna be maybe 10 decibels or so over those, those settings. So you would control it that way to make sure that it's a nice balanced mix and it's loud enough to be felt, but not too loud to really annoy. The loudest sound I ever personally measured with my SPL meter was a DJ A-weighted 117 dB and a guitar player A-weighted 122 dB at, uh, we're talking about six feet away. So um, the way the sound builds up in rooms, you're not really losing that much if you double your distance from the source. You're losing something, but it's still incredibly loud. And to have a loud guitar player like 122 dB, you have to mix your mix around that, which is really annoying. So. So just you know, watch your levels, make sure they're reasonable. You don't want to go deaf doing the job. Uh, get a professional SPL meter, like I mentioned, the one I have is IEC 651 Type 2. I got it off eBay and I paid, I think it was 65 or $70 for this. I've had it for several years. It's been calibrated. I use the, the wind filter on it, although I don't need to use the wind filter on it. And I just double check the mixes. And I have, I have lots of books, like notebooks, where I kept um, records of the levels of my mixes, and I, you know, and other people's mixes. I just show up to clubs sometimes, pull out my meter, and see how loud they are. And the more annoying ones were up around 108, 112 dBA weighted. That's just extremely loud for a band. You know, a loud rock band doesn't need to be 120 dB. So when you read that in a book, a magazine or an article on the on the web, and it says, loud rock band, 120 dB. You say, well, was it C-weighted, A-weighted? How far were you away from the stage? There's lots, lots of information that's missing from a simple reading like that. So be careful what you read, because it's not always true. It's just inaccurate. And um, the one thing I do if I'm mixing in a place, and I've got really loud sound levels going on, because the band is already loud, and I'm trying to compensate, and I turn things up, even if it's not like disastrously loud, but maybe it's 105, 110 dB uh, with the bass, I will put signs on the speakers that say, if you are reading this, you should be wearing earplugs just to make sure I'm covered, right? To warn people that this is loud and don't stand beside a speaker with your arm against the speaker, rocking out to the band, and then, you know, all of a sudden you're tickling your ear. Like tickling the ear is a warning sign that uh, something bad could happen. So protect your hearing, uh, keep SPL readings reasonable when you're mixing a band. Bands don't have to be too loud to be effective. All right, well, that's all I got to say about SPL meters and sound levels of bands today. Thank you. Please subscribe. I got more audio engineering information coming out. I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much.